Okay, so let's look at uh, a little bit of uh, how up vectors and rolls and resolution planes, that kind of thing. So the first thing uh, you have to keep in mind when you're doing IK and FK is that a chain a chain is is two parts. So you've got FK controlling this, and FK system is going to decide. Okay, I've got rotation here. I've got rotation here. Where do you end up being at the end here? The IK system says, okay, here's where you want to be. How do I connect to that? And then there's one more question is, I've got a whole roll. I've got a whole 360 degrees I could be spinning around here. Where am I going to be in that context? So if you go and you, you take a quick look, you look at your chain, there's, there's the roll tab. This should be telling us uh, where we want to be. Now, if I just draw a chain and start spinning the roll tab, nothing's happening. It's because I'm not being driven by IK at the moment. But if I go in and if I say change a key, now it knows I'm solving an IK. It knows it requires some kind of plane. And as you spin this around, you can hit the whole range of solvers in there. Just a quick note, sometimes a, a question I get is uh, if you want to go in here and uh, have this spin without changing, the, without changing the last bone, you can do that. You just go into the chain properties and turn off uh, effector rotation affected by last bone or drive it with IKFK blending. And that's just a side note because that, that comes up sometimes. But the main question that we're, we're looking at is the way this, this spins around and is, um, can be controlled by roll, by up vector, by uh, various uh, mechanical means here. So if you want to start to study this in detail, the first thing that, that I usually do is I go under my visibility options and I turn on uh, rotation limits. Actually, not rotation limits. Uh, chain critical zone. And the reason I like to do that is if I go in and I do something like add an up vector, well, as soon as you're solving in, in IK, you, you do have an up vector on that plane. So here it's Y, X, Y, Z. Uh, usually, if I'm doing it, if I'm doing this like uh, by numbers, I have an up vector, I always click on use root coordinates. There's no sp point in having these numbers in global space. So you pretty well want that on if you're if you're doing global if you're doing um, doing it numerically but typically what people do is they'll go in and and get an up vector so you just get a null or some kind of implicit and you just go skeleton uh, chain up vector which is right here click under there bing so right off the bat you can see now that's why I like this show chain critical zone I, I don't really care about these cones too much. I mean, it's good. You got to watch them to set up your right uh, rotation order. But, but the what's nice is just seeing the uh, the actual angle on this thing. So you can see the roll in 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 this system is an offset against that up vector system, which is neat. You can drive this and you can rotate. Now, if you want to do it uh, the the old uh, SI three D way, you can also use the uh, the preference, the preference angle on the X as the offset. So people have all kinds. There is knowledge in the industry of how of all kinds of tools to go in here and uh, and wire to this this preferred angle and use that to control the X. But you know, and if you're, uh, I think the best way to do it is just go in and use the roll. And so you, you spin you spin this thing around, and and then you can control your your plane of offset. Now um, I'm just trying to think. So yeah, this this is this is kind of a thing here too. You can define a preferred axis as well, and that's going to define just by these numbers. Hey, I just want to go x and z, and and that's going to define it. Or you can define uh, the space of an object, or you can come and wire to this. Uh, most of you, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but er everything in XSI can be wired. Every one of these things can be animated. Any, every one of these things can be a giant solver that comes in and, and switch some kind of system that comes in and switches or controls or switches from mock vector to preference angle. So the more interesting setups I mean you can do by going in and uh, making your own IK. That kind of stuff is covered uh, by my uh, guild of scripted operators on uh, softimage.com. Okay so and and then there's the kind of basic stuff you know you can put you can put rotation limits on things you can come in here and say uh, and I'll just draw just draw a simple chain. I probably don't have to go into too much detail here. I think it. I think it's self-explanatory. But say I want a uh, rotation, a rotation angle on this chain. Well, again, you go on your hit Shift S 
or go under here, get your visibility options, turn on uh, chain chain rotation limits, and then you can do stuff like on this tab you can go set uh, the rotation limits on the rotation limits tab. You just turn them on and you can say okay, well my min angle, well that's X, I can't see it, I'm not a plane, but my uh, here where am I? My Z is really the one I want to look at here. So my Z is available from here to here. And you can set this by, like, you can set this yourself. So you can go set, move this and say, uh, skeleton set minimum rotation. And that's going to move it to that pose. Typically, I just come in here and slide them. But you can, you can shift it around, like a little icon there. So the other thing is stiffness. So stiffness is, is one of those things in chains that comes up now and then. There are better ways there are better ways to solve these problems. So exactly stiffness, you can try and do like the dog leg problem. But you know, now we've got a whole a dog leg solver. I think you're better off using a dog leg, but it's still it's still good to know this stuff. So if I come in here and select all these chains, here I'll, I'll make two copies of this. So I've got I've got this chain here and it's got, you know, what whatever stiffness it's got. It's it's basically evenly distributing the solve over over all the chains on this accordion. But if I come in here and I hit, see I've got a multi, I'll get a multi PPG just by by hitting enter. And see it says multi right there. So I can come in and uh, just affect the stiffness. So if I if I text the stiffness on all of them, it's not it's not going to do anything. But what I want to do is use stiffness and I'm going to do a, a, a range. I think it goes between 1 and 0. So if I do a linear range between 0 and 1 and hit enter, okay you're gonna see a certain kind of behavior you see how it's flopping itself here and it fades off this way or I can do a linear range between 1 and 0 and have it flip the other way so that gives you that gives you a sense of how how stiffness works on a dog leg you can use stiffness to try and go in and, and wire to it you can say I'm doing uh, you know uh, a dog leg here and then you say, um, okay, yeah, I'm going to change the stiffness angle here as as I'm tugging around to get to get my control of my dog leg. But I'm going to get to doing dog legs later. I think the dog leg solver is better.